Molarity and dilution is going to be the topic in this lesson, and we're going to find out that the most common way we're going to measure concentration in a typical general chemistry course is molarity, but not the only one by any means, and we'll learn several other ways uh, towards the end of the Gen Chem 1 topics, about chapter 13 or so. Uh, but for now, we're going to focus on molarity, which has a very simple definition. Uh, we'll do use a couple applications, and then we're also going to take a look at dilutions, where you're just taking a solution from being more concentrated in a solute to being less concentrated in a solute. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. This is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep, uh, so you can find those courses at chadsprep.com. All right, so let's take a look at molarity here. We gotta start with just a simple definition and molarity is simply equal to the number of moles of solute over the total number of liters of solution. And so notice solution here means a combination of both the solvent and solute combined, whatever that total volume in liters is. Now I want you to actually look at this as if it's just a simple mathematical expression here. So M molarity equals N, which stands for moles, over the volume in liters of the solution. So just shorten it up a little bit because I want to make, I just really want you to look at it as an algebraic expression here that's got three variables, molarity, moles of solute, and the volume in liters of the solution. And with those three variables, if you're supplied with any two of them, you can find the third. So if I gave you the moles of solute and the liters of solution, you could solve for molarity. But if you rearrange this a little bit, you could also take molarity times the volume in liters to get the moles. And then finally, if you rearrange this, you could solve for that volume in liters and get moles over molarity to get there. So and the important part here, and especially important, is this middle one right here, because we now have a new way of calculating moles. So we learned in the last chapter how to turn grams into moles and moles into grams, and moles into molecules or atoms, and atoms or molecules into moles. Uh, and things of a sort, but now we have a new way of finding moles as it applies to a solution. And it's through the molarity and the volume in liters. And you're gonna wanna get it in your head that if you know both the molarity and the volume of a solution, then you have a way of knowing the moles of solute in that solution. And that's very important because once you know the moles, you can convert that to grams, you can convert that to molecules or atoms, you could convert that to moles of something else based on a mole to mole ratio from like a balanced chemical reaction. So super important here. And we're going to look at a couple of applications before talking about dilutions here. So the first question I want to ask you here is, how would 500 milliliters of 0 0.25 molar NaOH be prepared? So and in the question, the molar mass of or molecular weight of 40 grams per mole here uh, for NaOH is given. So if it wasn't, we'd have to obviously look it up on a periodic table. All right, so but in this case it was provided so life is good, but what you need to realize so is that you're given both the volume and the molarity. And again, you wanna get it through your head and get used to recognizing this, that if you're given both the molarity and the volume, you know the number of moles of whatever the solute is, in this case, NaOH. And if you know the moles, well, in this case, we wanna know how to prepare the solution. And you can't really measure out a number of moles on a scale, but you can measure the grams. So once we find those moles, we can convert it to grams using that molar mass here. So, and again, we just wanna look and say, okay, moles equals molarity times the volume in liters, which in this case is 0 0.25 molar. So, but this needs to get converted to liters. And so when you divide by a thousand to convert to liters, that just makes this 0 0.5 liters. Uh, which in this case is going to get us 0 0.125 moles. And I'm not going to worry about sig figs on this problem, FYI. So there's 0 0.125 moles of NaOH. So and again, to, to make this solution, then we then need to secure 0 0.125 moles of solid NaOH. And we'll put it in what's typically called a volumetric flask. And we'd fill it up to a total volume of 500 milliliters. So they have different volumetric flasks for specific volumes. Uh, and basically you fill it up to a nice little thin line at the very thin neck. That way you get a pretty accurate measurement of that volume since it's calibrated to that specific volume at that little line. So 
All right, so in this case, we need to now convert this into grams. So we know, because that's how we're going to measure it. We're going to measure out the number of grams of a substance using a scale. You can't really measure out the moles directly from a scale. So we'll take that 0 0.125 moles of NaOH, and the connection between moles and grams is always the molar mass right off the periodic table, but in this case, it was given in the question. So we'll put moles of NaOH on the bottom to cancel with our dimensional analysis grams of NaOH on top, and the molar mass is always the mass of one mole, which in this case was given as 40 grams. So and if you plug this into your calculator, so it turns out 0.125 is the same thing as 1 8 as a fraction, and 1 8 of 40 is 5 grams of NaOH. And so if you were going to make this solution, what you'd end up doing is taking 5 grams of NaOH, putting it in that volumetric flask, and then filling it up to 500 milliliters of water. Now, if you really wanted to have proper technique here, what you'd end up doing, so it turns out you wouldn't actually add 500 milliliters of water because this probably is going to take up just a little bit of volume itself. And that's why instead of saying add 500 milliliters of water, it says fill up to a total of 500 milliliters of water. But what you're going to do is it turns out, you know, when this dissolves, sometimes you get a little bit of a volume change in the process. And so you wouldn't actually initially fill it all the way up to 500 milliliters. You'd actually just, you know, maybe fill it up a fourth of the way, make sure all that gets dissolved, and then fill it up the rest of the way to 500 milliliters. So if you're doing this in the lab, that's kind of the procedure you'd take. So, but in this case, the correct answer is simply take five grams of NaOH and fill to 500 milliliters. Let's take a look at that second question here. Second question is, what volume of five molar NH3 contains 0.1 moles? So what volume of five molar NH3, ammonia, contains 0 0.1 moles. And so here we're being asked to solve for volume, and we're being provided with both the molarity and the number of moles. And if you recall, well, that's exactly what we need to be in order to solve for that volume. We need the number of moles and the molarity. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to treat this as if it's an algebraic expression here. We're going to say that the volume in liters equals the moles over the molarity, which in this case is going to be 0.1 moles over five molar. And again, molarity equals moles over liters. So instead of writing the molarity here, you could also look at this from a dimensional analy analysis perspective and write that as moles per liter. And in this case, those moles are gonna cancel. And when you divide by one over liters, you just get liters in the numerator here. And so in this case, 0.1 divided by five is gonna be 0 0.02 liters. And if we want to turn that into milliliters, maybe this is a multiple choice question. It's all in uh, milliliters for the answers. Then we just move this over three places and we'd get 20 milliliters. Cool. So whether it's 0.02 liters or 20 milliliters, so the question didn't specify, but again, if you had a multiple choice question, that would be the deal. Cool. So this is kind of the definition of molarity. And again, it really often comes down to this. And uh, in this one section, I actually prefer looking at it as an algebraic expression. And if you got two of the three variables, you can solve for the third by one of these three expressions. And I prefer looking at it that, that way because students often uh, are more commonly going to mess up if they just try to do the dimensional analysis and said, what do I need to do with these numbers to make the answer come out with units of liters? And, and you can do it that way. And if you already got it down that way, fantastic. Don't change it. So, but if you've, you've had some trouble with this or you're still struggling with this or you're brand new to it, I would recommend kind of looking at it more as an uh, algebraic expression. Let's take a look at dilutions. All right, so talking about dilutions, again, this is taking a, a solution from being more concentrated in a certain solute to being less concentrated, typically by adding more solvent. And again, in this chapter, that's probably going to mean by adding more water. Okay, so this is our lovely dilution equation, but I kind of want to give you an idea of where it comes from. So we'll start with an absurd example. Let's just say I like Kool-Aid and I like it a lot. And so instead of putting one packet of Kool-Aid into a pitcher, I put 30 packets of Kool-Aid into a pitcher and I go taste that Kool-Aid and it is way too concentrated. And so I know that I need to dilute it. And so what I do is I go take that pitcher of really concentrated Kool-Aid and I pour it into my bathtub and then I fill up the tub and then I take a glass full and Yep, money Kool-Aid now because it's been diluted to a much better concentration. And so my question for you is if you remember, how many packets of Kool-Aid did I stick in the original pitcher? And hopefully you said 30. And my next question though is the important one. How many packets of Kool-Aid ended up in my bathtub? 
30 yet again because we didn't add any more Kool-Aid. We only added more water. And that's the idea. When you're doing a dilution, you're not adding any more solute. The number of moles of solute that you start with is the number of moles of solute that you end with. You're just adding more solvent to end up with more solution. And so if you recall, that the moles of solute is equal to the molarity times the volume in liters. And that's actually where this first equation comes from. If you take molarity times liters equals molarity times liters, you're just saying the initial number of moles equals the final number of moles of solute. And that's what's true in a dilution. Now it turns out you don't actually have to use the volume in liters for this to work because if you use milliliters on both sides, as long as you use the same unit of volume on both sides, it's going to cancel. And so even though we've kind of just derived it using molarity times liters, so you can use any units you want to. And in fact, you can actually use different units of concentration. You're not relegated to only using molarity. This applies to any units. You can use percent concentrations or molalities or other things as well that we'll learn in the future. So, and that's why you can also write this as C1V1 equals C2V2, where C now stands for concentration in any kind of units. The key is you just got to use the same units for concentration on both sides of the equation. So this is kind of a little more generic. This is specific to molarity. You'll see both of these presented pretty commonly. Um, so you might have only seen one right now. I just want to make sure I provided both. So at least I provided the one you've likely seen at this point. Okay, so let's do a couple of uh, calculations with this. And first one says if 50 milliliters, let's write this down. 50.0 milliliters of 3.0 molar hydrochloric acid is diluted to 300 milliliters. So we start off with 50 milliliters of it. We dilute it all the way down to a total volume of 300 milliliters. And the question is, what is its final concentration? So in this case, you should realize that the thing we're solving for, the final concentration is M2 here. And once again, we're just going to do M1 V1 equals M2 V2. And M1 here is the original concentration, 3.0 molar. The original volume is 50 milliliters. And again, we can use any units of volume we want to, as long as we use the same units on both sides. M2 is what we're solving for. And then the final volume here, 300 milliliters. One thing to note, and this is important, is that V2 is the total final volume of the solution. So we'll see that's important because you can also talk about, well, how much water you added. So, but that's not what V2 is. V2 is the total volume of the solution. So if you had to go back and figure this out, well, if you start with 50 milliliters and you end up with a total of 300 milliliters, well, then how much water did you add? Well, it's the difference, 250 milliliters. And so be careful. Sometimes when you're solving for volume, they might want to be like, to what? total final volume is it diluted or they might say how much water is added and if it's the total final volume you're solving for you're solving for v2 but if you're just looking for how much solvent or water in this case gets added that would actually be v2 minus v1 the difference between how much you end up with and how much you started with which in this example would have been 250. all right but in this one we're actually solving for that final concentration here m2 here and so m2 is going to equal 3 times 50 is 150 over 300 and notice the milliliters are going to cancel here, and, but we're still going to have units of molarity here, and that's just going to equal 0 0.5 molar. Cool. Now, there's another way to look at this here. So you could look at this and say we went from 50 milliliters to 300 milliliters. We ended up with six times more volume since 300 is equal to six times 50. And if you end up with six times more volume, so you end up with a six time lower concentration. And notice I'm going from three molar down to 0.5 molar. So that's what you get when you divide three molar by six, you get 0.5 molar. So six times more volume, we call that a six fold uh, dilution. You end up with a six fold lower concentration as we did in this case. Let's take a look at one more example here. All right, to what final volume must 20 milliliters? of 0 0.40 molar NaCl be diluted to result in a 0 0.08 molar solution. So we're starting off with 0.4 molar, we're lowering it all the way down to 0 0.08 molar, and the question is to what final volume must it be diluted? Now this is great because it's asking to what final volume is it being diluted? And that's just simply V2. It's not saying how much water needs to be added, because then again, that would be the difference between V2 and V1, but it's just looking for that total final volume, V2. And so once again, M1V1 
equals m2 v2. The original molarity is 0 0.4 molar. The original volume is 20 milliliters. Lost my equal sign there. Final molarity is 0 0.08 molar and then times V2. And so we're gonna take 0.4 times 20 divided by 0 0.08 and it turns out 0.4 divided by 0 0.08 is five and five times 20 is 100. And another way to look at this is the exact opposite of the way we looked at the last problem. And you could look at it and say, oh, to go from 0.4 to 0.08, notice this would be analogous in going from 40 down to eight. Well, that's five times less concentrated. And if you're gonna get five times less concentrated, then you need to end up with five times more volume. And five times more volume than 20 milliliters is indeed 100 milliliters. And that concludes the lesson. If you think other students are gonna find this lesson helpful, then a like and a share goes a long way to making sure YouTube is gonna show it to them. And if you're looking for plenty of practice on molarity and dilutions or the rest of general chemistry, uh, check out my general chemistry master course. It contains over 1200 practice questions, practice final exams, final exam rapid reviews. Uh, a free trial is available. Happy studying.